Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. If you take a moment to fill out that QR code, remember you can also email us and let us know that you're watching too. We would appreciate you letting us know that information because we track that. If you're home because you're not feeling well, we certainly pray that you would get better quickly so you can come back here. Or if you are a regular online worshiper or joining us for the first time, hey, make sure you let us know if there's any way that we can connect with you or anything that you need from us for sure. So today we're looking at a different gospel account. St. Luke is going to give us his account of that Easter morning. So let's get going with our opening song. We continue with Martin Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me, and hear my prayer. O men, How long shall my honor be turned into shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. 
there are many who say, Who will show us some good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. In peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sins to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have turned away from each other in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We repent and are truly sorry for these our sins. Have mercy on us, kind Father, because of the obedience of our brother, Jesus Christ, your Son. Forgive us all that is past, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, move us to serve you faithfully. Set our feet upon a new path of life, and build your kingdom here among us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy on us, and has sent his Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Old Testament lesson for this third Sunday of Easter is from Isaiah chapter 42. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. 
I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that fills it, the coastlands and their inhabitants. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter, Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and on the third day rise? And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told them these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them as an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. I'm Miss Angie, Director of Small Saints Learning Center here at St. Stephen, and I'm so excited to be with you today. Today, in his sermon, Pastor Joe is going to talk to us about our identity in Christ. He's going to talk to us about what that means for us, who we are because of what God has done for us. And because we are God's children, and he loves us so much that he died on the cross and rose for us, we know that we belong to him. And that's the exciting news. We don't have to worry about what this world thinks of us. We don't have to worry sometimes about what, how we judge ourselves. All we have to worry about is what God thinks of us. And he loves us and he cares for us so much that he calls us his children. It made me think about the dog tags that the military friends wear that have their name and what part of the military they're in and all their information on it. It's there specifically to identify them, to say who they are and who they belong to, that they belong to the United States of America. So that God does that for us. When we're baptized in him, he makes us his child. So today I brought a page for you for the children to take home that has a dog tag on it that says child of God. And no matter our age or who we are, we can embrace that title. That is our identity. That is who we are. We are chosen children of God. We are loved, forgiven, free, a new creation, chosen, wonderfully made, 
healed, saved, redeemed, justified, sanctified, his heir, blessed, a conqueror, strong, an overcomer, and righteous because we are his and what he's done for us. So I'm going to ask you now to pray with me and to thank God for that wonderful identity that we have in him. Dear God, we're so grateful for you and for all you've done for us. We're thankful, Lord, that you have chosen us to be your very own child. We ask that you continue to be with us, Lord. Help us to be not ashamed of who we are and very willing to share our identity that we have in you with others. This we ask in your name. Amen. online viewers chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit for obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. No more strife in this life? Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Absolutely, that would be nice for sure. But the inspiration for my title for the sermon this week is actually from hymn 600 or 464. The strife is o'er, the battle is done. First verse is, the strife is o'er, the battle done, the victory of life is won, the song of triumph has begun. Alleluia. Some actually have been critical of the hymn, like Austin Lovelace. He describes this as a poor hymn, which has ridden to success on the coattails of a fine tune. Wow. Well, perhaps Pastor Joe is a little guilty of the same sort of thing because I'm finally playing this Easter hymn on Easter 3. <laughs> Before, I didn't pick it for earlier sections and certainly didn't pick it for Easter Sunday. So sorry if this is one of your favorite hymns and I'm finally getting to it. But Albert Bailey writes this, the words present the theological statement that the crucifixion was a contest between Christ and the devil's legions. 
in which Christ won. This is proved by the fact that Christ did not stay dead. The victory of life indeed is won. And I think this hymn is not just talking about Jesus' life, but he's connecting Jesus' life to ours. After all, (laughs) we have no life outside of Jesus for sure. And so that's probably a good thing for us to remember as we're contemplating this strife in this world and, and of course, uh, engaging this message today. I think Bailey was right, though, and certainly this is the feeling you get when you read the account of the first resurrection witnesses. You can almost hear the Mary say to one another, right? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hopefully in the sanctuary, you'll respond, they'll respond back, and hopefully you did at home too. But nevertheless, the response by the 11 and the others that heard the report from the women, well, it's a little puzzling to me. Were they simply overwhelmed in grief and fear to comprehend the words that the women women were bringing to them? Perhaps that could be the case. Uh, Did they have a problem with the witnesses being women? (laughs) I know a lot of people try to go that way, but I don't think that that's certainly the case for sure. This was a close-knit group, a tight community that was around Jesus Christ. I don't think that there was a lot of that going around, and Jesus, I'm sure, would have put an end to that. Perhaps the news simply was just too good to be true. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe they were just good Lutherans thinking to themselves, what does this mean? Meaning, what does it mean for them now? (laughs) Well, let's go to the first commandment, right? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And if this would have been their playbook, the playbook of the eleven and the others, well, I think they certainly would have simply just believed. After all, Jesus did tell them exactly how this was going to go down. I think this is helpful for us to see that even the first witnesses struggled with this. What does this mean? Perhaps, laugh out loud, (laughs) this is why the Lord made sure that this was recorded in his word. So let's dive into that word again, connecting that to our word strife today. Strife, angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues, conflict. The scripture helps us sort through this with the following examples in St. Paul's letter to God's people, probably in other places too, but I like this one in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But I, brothers and sisters, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? You see, Fundamentally, you and I are called to something that is so much bigger than anything in this world. Like our guiding statement says, when it says, we are Team Jesus, joyfully empowering others to be Christ followers. This is our guiding statement, but it is also a similar guiding statement for all Christians in the world. It is, after all, Christ's design for his church. This is our identity, that we are Christ followers, that we belong to Jesus, we live for Jesus, we love Jesus, and we are to shine Jesus' light in the world. Only the church can be this for the world. And if we're acting worldly like the Corinthians were, well, we're creating strife, and that's not Christ's design. Christ's design is a call to selfless service towards one another, towards others, for the sake of the proclamation of the gospel. This is St. Paul's problem with the Corinthians. They aren't arguing about the color of carpet here, (laughs) although uh, you you could see that that would necessarily not be as big of a problem. They have completely lost their identity and focus and purpose. And this is also easy for us to fall into the same type of trap. Whenever we make what we are doing about something different than what Jesus wants us to be about. See, here's a good vibe 
Here's a good video to illustrate exactly this point. So we live in this world and it's characterized by brokenness. We don't have to look very hard to see. There are things like disease, disasters, wars. There's a lot of pain in this world, but this is not God's original design. God has a perfect design. And the way that we have gotten ourselves into brokenness is through something that the Bible calls sin. Sin is turning away from God's design and pursuing our own way. And that leads us to brokenness. Brokenness eventually leads us to death. And this death will separate us from God forever. But God doesn't want us to stay in brokenness. So he's made a way out. And that way is Jesus. Jesus comes and he enters into our brokenness. And the death that we deserve for pursuing brokenness, Jesus takes our place and dies on a cross. And his body is broken for us. And three days after he dies, he rose from the dead and he made a way out of brokenness. And people try many things to get out of brokenness. Things like religion, things like success or relationships, education or drugs and alcohol. But none of these things can get us out of brokenness. The only way out is Jesus. And if we turn from our sin and believe that Jesus died for us and rose from the dead, we can leave brokenness and grow in a relationship with God and pursue his design. And more than that, we can go. We can be sent just like Jesus back into brokenness to help others come through him to pursue God's design. Now, there's two types of people in the world. There are people that are pursuing God's design and there's people that are still in brokenness. We have to ask ourselves, where are we? So where do you think you are? We are witnesses to the world that the world is broken, and that the only thing that can help this world is Jesus and Jesus alone. We know this about ourselves as poor, miserable sinners, that we need Jesus in our life to help us live our life for him, and certainly the world needs this too. The world cannot solve its own problems. The world is the perfect example of strife. We have conflicting opinions on solutions, and the sides will never meet on so many different levels, whether it's politics or social issues, etc., you name it. Even Christians engaging in po politics illustrate this wonderfully. I love this book that was written by Jim Wallace. I just love the title of the book, God's Politics, Why the Right Gets It Wrong and the Left Doesn't Get It. Now, don't get lost here. I've recorded a Bible class that, that uh, it's on YouTube that you could go to that talks about how Lutherans understand their role in both kingdoms or both realms living in that way. And if you don't want to listen to mine, there's a lot of good theologians out there that have some really good information on how this works. Yes, God cares that we pay attention to the kingdom of government, and also he wants us to be paying attention to the kingdom of his church. But we don't want to get these things mixed up. We don't want to make sure we're getting lost in this. And most importantly, as Team Jesus, we want to make sure that we are staying focused on being the church and being involved in the things that the church is supposed to be involved with. That is, proclaiming the forgiveness ministry of Jesus Christ. That's our purpose in this life, to remind the world that there is a God that loves them, that has forgiven them, that has sent his son to die for them, and that we are looking forward to the life that is to come when Jesus comes in to fix all the problems of this world. Then we will no longer have elections or hospitals or anything that's a mess in this world. We will just reign with Christ and Christ alone. The other strife component is illustrated also in St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, when he writes in chapter 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is indeed at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Remember the situation for St. Paul. He's in chains. He's in prison. And the Philippians are worried about this. Well, St. Paul said, no, don't worry about this. This is exactly where Jesus wants me. I'm able to be able to proclaim the gospel. And one day I'm going to be able to proclaim that gospel to Caesar because that's where I'm going. He wants the Philippians to stay positive, to not 
let the world's strife get them all wrapped up and distracted from what they're supposed to be doing. See, our identity needs to be that of St. Paul. For us to live is Christ and to die is gain. We can't be like the world, afraid of death, acting like this is somehow a big, gigantic concern for you and for me. Death is a curse of sin, and it's of course we are going to (laughs) die, and we shouldn't fear death. Why? Well, because Jesus is victorious over death. There are much worse things than death, and we know this to be true. We are not living for this world. We are living for the life to come, and we are here to encourage others too. This is what makes us different. But if we're not living this way, then we We're truly lost in our understanding of our own identity in Jesus Christ. And many that are not getting this are indeed losing their faith. James Emery White illustrates this point nicely by going back to a survey that we've looked at before, and he revisits an understanding or trying to dive in a little deeper to its findings. He writes in the end of this blog, No, the biggest and most concerning revelation of all was the number one reason people gave for leaving a faith tradition. Are you ready for it? 67% who left a faith tradition did so because they simply stopped believing in that religion's teachings. We've looked at statistics from the survey before and other surveys that are related to it that are showing this decline in American faith and all faith traditions. I agree with Wright's recent blog on this topic for this reason, because I truly believe that we as a church, as a whole in America, are perhaps, and perhaps other religions too, we are so busy addressing the things that we are against, rather than proclaiming from the housetop the things that we are actually for. What's not to be liking about the Christian religion, right? We get forgiveness of sins. We get to encourage one another in this strife-lived life. We're reminded about our families and the importance of of bringing each other up in the faith and passing that faith on to the next generation. If we are doing these things, then why would anybody ever want to walk away from this faith? Want to be an influencer? (laughs) Try Jesus. Yeah, he's good for everyone. So I show you this (laughs) Mazda RX-7 and a Well, it's a red Chevy Chevette, one that I owned in college. (laughs) I tell you this story because uh, for whatever reason, the apartment came with an enclosed garage and inside that garage, we parked right next to this white MRX. Well, one night somebody broke into the garage and they stole our Chevette that was sitting right next to the Mazda RX-7. Why in the world would somebody steal our car and not the other one? Well, I think it perhaps was because they wanted to go unnoticed (laughs) while they were driving around and hitting other places. So as I'm filling out this police report, I'm not upset. And the police officer's getting a little concerned because I'm not upset about this. And I'm thinking in my own head, it's like, why did they take my car? I mean, there's Mercedes's in this enclosed garage and They chose my Chevette. I was probably more confused by anything, but then again, by the same token, what good is it to get mad or yell at the police officer or something like that? I Obviously, he was concerned that I was involved in this ring of theft, but I wasn't. Not trying to toot my own horn, but rather just illustrating a point. When we act like Jesus, right? People notice that we are different just like that cop noticed that, well, I wasn't exhibiting the behavior that he would normally be accustomed to, that somebody just had their car stolen. And when they ask why we are different, well then, well then that gives us the opportunity to tell them why, right? To give witness to the hope that we have inside of us. Again, we're not living for this world. We're living for that life to come. The hymn writer finishes his hymn with this verse. Lord, By the stripes which wounded thee, from death's dread sting, thy servants free, that we may live and sing to thee. Alleluia. Bailey expounds a bit more on this great hymn, 
And I think it certainly proclaims something that we are for. Christ rose and brought new life. And in doing so, through his declaration, it is finished, was also saying, it has all just begun. The finality of this text is the finality of newness. It is the realization that we are continually being made new, that creation is continually being restored, and that every day we are called to a life anew with Christ. Alleluia! What a song of victory that is. So sing your song. Nicely spoken, nicely put together. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. That is our song. And let it ring so that others may know of God's great love for them in Christ Jesus too. Amen. And may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts he has blessed us with and entrusted to us for his kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize. As St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Wow, wasn't the Easter egg hunt and petting zoo fun? I think everybody had a great time, including all of our volunteers. To quote Deaconess Kim, we love our volunteers. With that in mind, we have, you have another opportunity for you to volunteer to help us on Saturday, April 20th for the Shine event. On the Shine event, we will be cleaning up Forest Avenue and 291, and we will also be sprucing up Fairview New Hope Cemetery. What a terrific way to show liberty that we are Team Jesus, joyfully empowering others to be Christ followers. We'll start at 9 and end at noon, and a piece of lunch will be following immediately afterward. So please be sure and sign up on Sign Up Genius as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Here are some highlights from this week's Team Jesus News. Silver Saints will have its monthly gathering on Thursday, April 18th at 12 noon. This is for all members and friends 55 plus are welcome to join. Also, our Gather Around the Tables Women's Ministry will meet this Friday, April 19th at 6.30 p.m. All ladies 19 and older are encouraged to join. Bring a Bible and bring a friend as we enjoy conversation and fellowship together. Also, it's time to volunteer and sign up to participate in this year's Vacation Bible School. You can find out all the details about how you can sign up and how you can support this event by checking the Team Jesus News where you can also find more about what's happening at St. Stephen. So you want to be a Lutheran, or maybe you know somebody that you would like them to be a Lutheran? Well, we got good news for you because our next new member class is starting on April 30th. That is a Tuesday night at 7.30, and this class will be online. So if you are interested in that, let me know or let the office know so that we can get you that link for that class so that you can participate online. Um, or if you would like us to send out an invite to somebody that you would like for us to reach out to, um, certainly get that information to us also, um, office or myself again. Looking forward to this next new member class. Hopefully, um, if you are excited about joining us here at St. Stephen to see what we are about and engage in ministry uh, with us, we are excited to have you uh, join in. Hopefully, we'll see you then. Hey, Team Jesus, 
It's Deaconess Kim. Did you know we love our volunteers here at St. Stephen? Volunteers are such an essential part of our ministries here. And to recognize and acknowledge the contribution that our volunteers make, we're having a special volunteer appreciation social on Sunday, April 21st. We invite everyone, and especially our volunteers, to join us during the education hour in the fellowship hall that day. However you volunteered for Team Jesus over the past year, we invite all of our amazing volunteers to join us for special treats and a heartfelt thank you from the St. Stephen staff. Also, please note that to enable all of our volunteers to join us for this event, we will have no Sunday school or Bible classes on April 21st. But I hope we see you there. morning in our prayers, we want to continue to pray for Troy Johnston and his battle with his cancer and heart condition, and also uh, Tony Karenbrock, Ann's husband that is on hospice still. Uh, prayers for Wyatt. This is Pam Morris's grandson. He's two and a half years old and is having kidney problems, and he needs a transplant, so prayers for that situation. Prayers for Grant. This is a four-month-old son of a former student of Stacia Milius. Uh, the students were Lincoln and Megan. Uh, their son has been diagnosed with cancer, uh, so prayers for them. And also prayers for Jared Sheets' mom. Uh, it turns out she has ulcers, so speedy recovery for her. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Rejoicing that our Savior's tomb is empty and that he has swallowed up death forever, let us pray for the church of our risen Lord and for everyone in need. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the faithful witnesses of the resurrection. Through their witness and testimony, you have empowered your church to proclaim the good news of Jesus. Empower us to be bold witnesses by embracing our ministry plan so that many more are added to your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in baptism, you have joined us to Christ's death and resurrection and made us citizens of your kingdom. We celebrate with those remembering baptismal birthdays this week, including Katrina, Trent, Barb, Blake. Move our hearts to repentance, that we would set our mind on things above and be directed by your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you care deeply about marriage and have promised to be the cord that binds marriage together. We rejoice with Tim and Kendra, Rich and Patty, and Jason and Nisha as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and strengthen them and all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Grant that all in authority would govern according to your will. Maintain order and curb evil, that we may live in peace. Watch over all those that serve to protect and keep us. Bless all of our medical responders and institutions that provide care and healing for us. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Righteous Lord, you have seated Christ at your right hand for our deliverance. Remember those afflicted with illness and injury that we have named, and also those that we name in our hearts right now. Give them healing, health, and strength according to your will. Sustain and comfort those who are mourning the death of loved ones, including the Rerick family, as uh, Wayne's funeral was this past Friday. Comfort those families with the hope, only the hope that you can bring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen. Christ the Lord is risen today. Saints on earth and angels say, raise your joys and triumphs high. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. Love's redeeming work is done. Fought the fight, the battle won. Lo, our songs eclipse is o'er. Lo, he sets in blood no more. In the stone that watched the seal, Christ hath burst the gates of hell. Death in vain forbids his right. Christ has opened paradise. Is again our glorious King. Is now thy sting. Once he died, your souls to sing. Where the victory of the grave. So we know where Christ has led. Following our exalted head, made like him, like him we rise. Ours the cross, the grave. Skies. Hail the Lord of earth and heaven, praise to thee by both be given, be we greet triumphant now.